Live from the McAllister House, this is Derailed Trains of Thought. Right, Tim. This is a bustling place. Oh man, watch your step there. I know it's everyone's yelling, and it's, I feel like we're either about to run, be run over, or run over some little it's, kid. It's, it's kind of that like fun tense that you have right before, <laughs> right before a big event. Yeah, of some sort. yeah. Uh, it's more fun tense when you're a kid. When you're the, the parent in charge, it's not as much fun. I've found. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's handy when we're just strangers. We're just sort of observing this unseen somehow. Yeah. Thanks to the magic of the podcast. Yeah. The, the pod and we're we seem to be on Earth for once, which is nice. Yes, this is a relatively normal house. I mean, it's awfully big. These people must be millionaires or something. Yeah. There's a lot of it's like cheaper by the dozen sort of thing. But <laughs> I'm not sure they're all from the same family. Yeah. Well. Well, well I mean, you know, same. Same, um, what's the term? Not not extended. What's the opposite of extended family? Non extended. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's actually good. I should know. I Immediate know. family. Immediate, that's, what, yes. that's what it's called. So, anyway, hi, folks. Hi. It's uh, almost Christmas. It is almost Christmas. So, Merry Christmas, y'all. Merry Christmas, <laughs> y'all. Y'all. You, you, you turn to Yandu all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I can't complain. My family actually says y'all a lot because my mother's from South Carolina. So, so I, I just do it sometimes randomly for no good reason. <laughs> I have no excuse. Uh, but no, it, we've got Nat King Cole going or rocking around the Christmas tree or something. And the lights are all up. Uh, this family, they're not our family. They're a very active family. Yeah. But the, the family is all gathered here. And uh, but later, I why think didn't the podcast bring our family with us? I don't know. Maybe we should ask the podcast yeah. to bring our family into this. We really point. should. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, how do you ask the podcast? I don't know. I, I just was starting <laughs> to think this is taking uncomfortable spiritual tones. So, <laughs> so. dear podcast, <laughs> I've been good this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Well, Nick, before we offend <laughs> people with more sensitive theologies, maybe we better move on. Let's go to our story school. So, Tim, oddly enough, our topic today is family. Family. Yeah, I just <laughs> Yeah, it just happens to be that. Man, that's it's it's very serendipitous. Yes, it is. Our observation we're talking off the podcast is it has really changed over time. It's a reflection in some ways of what culture thinks about family. Well, I think when we were talking, one of the what we were looking at a lot was uh, the TV family. I mean, that's a pretty good reflection, I think, of families like over the generations, mm -hmm. um, you know. The sitcom. Yeah, thinking about like the earlier sitcoms, families think Leave it to Beaver, mm -hmm. you know, very kind of generic and... You know, mother's always dressed nice and make, cooks the meals, and father comes home, and the kids have to learn some sort of important life lesson, and and that was kind of your traditional sitcom sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, like you get into the you get some Cosby's, and you yeah, know. well, I was uh, even before we get to the Cosby's, even like the seventies, you have the Brady Bunch. Where oh yeah, that's kind of your first example of a combined family. It's well, true. I was trying to remember. I don't re actually remember whether they were divorced families or widowed families i don't know i i mean they don't pay really, that much attention back then they don't really talk about it in theme song and honestly i don't know how much they actually talk about the mixed family outside of the theme song i mean otherwise you would just think that they were all i mean again it's been a long time since i've seen brady bunch i was never an avid viewer no just watching really. it on nick at night occasionally i just remember it was on tv because i was watching tv and yeah which yeah. was a thing back then just watching whatever was on yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's true uh fun fact um, I think my first celebrity crush was Marsha Brady. Really? Yeah. Nice. Uh, that, that blonde hair, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> TMI. No, so that was kind of one of our first exam examples of a non-traditional family. Yeah. I mean, traditional in the sense that they're all very white and rich and, and happy for the most yeah. part. Then also in the, was it 60s or 70s, all in the family. That was mm -hmm. where you got a very different sort of look at a family, a dysfunctional family yeah. in a lot of ways. You know, you had your your blowhard and then who was constantly fighting with his kid, yeah. um, adult daughter and her boyfriend and, and then husband. I don't know if you... I had you, never seen much of that, no. Okay, so that's, I mean, that was kind of an unusual, another sitcom, but in that period you started seeing very different sort of, sort of family situations. 
from I I don't know admittedly a whole lot about this particular genre, but I I think the Cosby Show is actually kind of unusual when it, when it came to African American sitcoms, and that some of the earlier ones. Again, I don't know this genre very yeah. well, but from what little I've seen and what I remember reading is that some of them, they were in much more humble circumstances. Okay. Whereas the Cosbys, they were uh, an affluent yeah. African-American family. They were rich. Yeah. Big house in New York and a doctor and surgeon. And well, both the parents were doctors, weren't they? Maybe. I, okay. d- I don't remember what they I have just memories of watching it and details have largely escaped me. <laughs> now I think Cosby, I largely think of um, chocolate cake. <laughs> And bright colored sweaters, and, yeah, 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 and stuff like that. And what's a cubit? What's ever, a cubit? You ever seen his Noah skit? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> what's From a cubit? Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> you're, you're talking stand up. Yeah, it was always chocolate cake thing, but yeah, yeah. I forgot about the chocolate. For some reason, I was thinking like chocolate pudding or and, Jello, and Jello, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that kind of stuff. Oh boy. Anyway, um, but now you get you skip to modern day, okay, and you have things like Modern Family, mm-hmm. which is purposely saying, hey. It's all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And again, very funny show, but it's certainly a reflection of, you know, of the times. Now, you also have more, you got you got the middle, which is hilarious, and it's very much a kind of Indiana family. Um, <laughs> I mean, they live in Indiana. See, and this is, I, I talked for some of the first bit about some of the old shows, and you can, I'll let you take over some of the new ones, because I honestly haven't seen very many of these. The, those, I hadn't watched most of them, those two recently, but when I used to go to my brother's house a lot, we'd watch that. Just because it was on that night and it was funny, and the middle is was great. Actually, did you ever see? I don't know if it's still on anymore. Fresh off the boat? No, I've heard. Um, no, I've not. That was a really fun uh, show about an Asian family, mm-hmm. um, immigrants, obviously, since hence the name. Yeah, but uh, it was it was really funny, and it was really fun and re- kind of refreshing to see it from a you know a different sort of different side of American culture. I think it's set in like the '90s because it, it's also kind of a thing with some of these. Well, like the, I'm not, comes. I'm not seen, but like the Goldbergs. Uh huh. Yeah, it's uh, set in like the '80s to play all that nostalgia up, and plus, I suppose playing the kind of the, well, like they did the same thing with the '70s, that '70s show. You know, they mm, threw yeah. it back in time, mm-hmm. kind of show a humorous version of what families of that time were were assumed to be. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess even. Happy Days is supposed to take place in the 50s, but I think the show is actually on in the 70s. Oh. Or 60s, yeah. 70s. So the, there's always kind of this nostalgia thing. I mean, Happy Days is not really a family sitcom, but there's still that sort of nostalgia factor. So, But it's interesting. When you move outside the sitcom, then families... Um, like, you used to have more drama shows. Like, you got Little House in the Prairie. Mm. You, you know, drama shows of... The Waltons. The Waltons family. But you don't get a lot of that now. Or maybe I just don't watch the right stuff. I wonder if... This is us has some of that in it. I, I keep hearing things, people talking about that as being a great, like, kind of slice of life show. It might, yeah, it might. It, it's interesting because now, family, and sometimes we have more and more shows that are like people mostly alone with a close friend or, or just husband. You know, there's not a lot of big family things anywhere, really. You know, that was kind of what was so, in some ways, startling about what, you know, and it was purposely startling watching um, Age of Ultron. You know, all these superheroes running around, and then suddenly, wait, you got a family? Yeah. <laughs> What's this about? You can do that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are bastions of it. Like, Blue Bloods is a CBS show that's okay. about a family of cops, essentially. And, like, I think one of them is a district attorney. But anyway, civil service. I mean, so it's it's a cop show, but it's a family, and so they get together for family meals. I guess. And I never watch it. And I, I know this show only because my grandmother watch, loves it, and some of the family does. But So there are examples, but those are more the exceptions i think i think we we are seeing a lot more of this like really kind of sparser families where your family nowadays almost more what you choose it to be than your actual blood relatives these shows have a thing about making you know you have your main character now especially when you do more of the spectral fiction shows you know the the fantasy sci-fi you don't see families as often yeah but what's interesting when they bring fam family still a great sense of um togetherness well they'll, they'll do two things they'll do the gardens galaxy thing which is like well we are family because we all survive together yeah and we've come to care about each other and or so. family is often if you don't start with family as dynamic family becomes surprise and drama like oh that's your mom or uh, no okay. your dad you know it's indiana jones and the last crusade okay you yeah. know it's like 
oh, my dad's here, and suddenly everything's awkward. <laughs> you know, gives a new uh, dimension, a to new dimension character. to your to your Lone Ranger, whoever it is. Mm-hmm. And that happens a lot in 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 more dramatic shows where all of a sudden, like you know, they'll just show up every once in a while, like, and it's an added relational something. Mm-hmm. You know, X Files. You know, Scully's parents will show up you know because they're they're sick and then it's a it's a story but normally just scully and Mulder run around with uh-huh. no ties to anyone yeah that, that makes sense the original macgyver uh, the final episode was he found out he had a son somewhere okay and so that's it's what prompted him to retire and they basically went on a long motorcycle trip together i mean we you all do the whole like you know long loss sibling or you know it's like even like soap operas you know <laughs> there's still something special about that person's connected to me, mm-hmm. you know, and that's still a big drama point. Yes, yes. I, and I guess that's kind of one of the uh, interesting things to explore with family is the there's lots of potential drama for it because of just the inherent connections, closeness that you have with other people. It causes it causes reactions that are different than normal people give you. Especially because, like, your family knows you in an intimate way that other people just don't. Mm-hmm. Sometimes for good, sometimes for bad. In the case of where you're talking about where it's more of a, the family is not as big a part of their life, then it's it's like, yeah, the secret connection or unspoken, usually usually some sort of estrangement going on, yeah. right? A lot of times if, if you've never seen these people. You know, what was a really powerful a story thing with family is not when you do the whole family. And again, I guess just, yeah, I just thought of another example of a good use of a extent, l- large family is um, the Weasleys from Harry Potter. Okay. Um, it, Harry's basically an orphan, but he has this horrible family, and you never see Hermione's parents hardly. But the Weasleys, there's like five, six kids, and they're all, <laughs> and they have this big family mentality, all you know, and uh-huh. everyone goes to their place for vaca- Christmas vacations and stuff. And you know, the big family mentality really creates that sense of comfy and you know of mm-hmm. belonging. Yeah, uh, a lot of times. But then, what I was going to say originally is that swords will often play with just the strong bond of. You know, it's the brother and sister, or mm. it's the mother and daughter. Yeah, it's the um, Gilmore Girls. You know, it's I, mother I daughter. Know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> or Alias. It's you oh, know mother father. Mother father. Yeah. You know, um, mm-hmm. lost daddy issues all daddy over the issues place. all over. Yeah. Then I think because large families are complicated to do unless that's your main point. Mm-hmm. For, especially for movies or things like that, you do the that tight relationship. We mentioned last time, you know, Full Metal Alchemist, Brothers. Yeah, I mean, brother. basically, <laughs> Brotherhood. Not, yeah, Brotherhood. <laughs> that is the name of the sequel series, Brotherhood. There's something very, very special and distinct about just that bond between two people. Two people. Yeah. We watched we watched Little Giants. You ever seen Little Giants? No. It's this 90, early 90s well, uh, actually, football. Well, I think I've seen some of it. That, we showed yeah. our kids because we Haley watched it literally, every, my sister Haley, like every day. Um, oh, when really? she was a <laughs> kid. Um, but so we showed our kid and they loved it. But it was very interesting watching. First of all, you have the Rick Moranis is the dad and it's him and his daughter because mm-hmm. the, my wife saw the picture. So you have that going on. But then there's, you had this other kid who joins the football team and he, you, you just see a couple scenes of his dad's always so busy and he's going away, which was like a thing in like the 90s. Like that was the, mm. that was the dad The figure. absent dad. The absent dad. Yeah. It was all, um, it's sort of a trope. It was. And it's kind of gone away, that one. Now there's just... Basically, families where one of the parents is gone or, or redating or single parent, single parenting. Sort of yeah, there's a lot more of that. Yeah, um, you know, or once upon a time where it's just chaos. Yeah, <laughs> now, you, you've got your finger on um, current kids stuff a yeah. little better than I do right now. Is the orphan story still kind of a thing? Because huh. I, I was thinking sort of about like an American Tale. Yeah, the first one. You know, that's all about Fievel trying to find his family again. Yeah. He's been estranged for them. So, Or Annie, which is all, all about, you know, wanting to belong to someone. Um, Over twist, but that's a lot older. Yeah, right, right. But it, it plays into, it's int- very interesting from a kid's perspective because not having someone to belong to is kind of a, it's kind of a scary idea. But at the same time, a lot of your, what happens in most of your popular kids' adventures things, the parents aren't around. No, no, you don't want the parents. No, you don't want the parents. You want to go on an adventure on your own and have fun. But then there's certain stories like those two that uh, kind of turn it on its head. Weren't even the boxcar children sort of? Oh, yeah. They were, 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 at least in the first book. Yeah, I mean, then, yeah, exactly. Then then they get a rich uncle and they get to go anywhere on on mysteries and (laughs) (laughs) vacations all over the place. I don't, I have not noticed much of the orphan thing. No. I'm in very distinct, small circles of kid things. 
Um, so I don't, but I have, uh, but I'm not knows that as much. No, yeah, I was, I was just thinking you're talking about absentee dad being sort of a, a phase. Yeah. It's like, I, I it just occurred to me. I hadn't seen very many orphans. I'm, not, I'm not sure what the phase is exactly. I mean, because you still have for a traditional like kids movie, you still have basically mom, dad, mm-hmm. you know, that's just how they do it. Yeah. Um, and that hasn't really changed as kind of the go-to thing for kid stuff. Unless you're Disney and then it's just like, there is no mom. <laughs> Unless it's Brave. Um, yeah, that's true. Brave Which was great. The, yeah, it was one of the few ones that I remember having that's a strong really, mother that's really good. thing. It was a whole strong family thing, actually. Oh, that's true, yeah. Because most, most of Disney stuff does not have a strong family. I mean, mm-hmm. the entire crux of Frozen is basically they were horrible parents and died. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, and that was one of the things that made The Incredibles so unique incredible incredible yeah i mean because it was it wasn't just about the kids being superheroes or the parents it was about them being superheroes together which is why incredibles 2 should be awesome you have powers (laughs) um it's very interesting everyone wants a family Mm -hmm. but we don't always that's not always how we start stories and you know off the hand i'm not sure of very many epic fantasies where family's a thing yeah which is interesting it is sort of ironic though because yeah, th- that's something I've noticed, especially in like modern fandom and stuff. People like to, if they're not pairing together people together romantically, uh, they tend to pair them together sort of family like. Like you hear people talk about the cast of Agents of Shield, for example, like Coulson and May being kind of the the parents, yeah. and then the you had Sky that was being or Daisy now, you know, until Daisy met her real, her real parents, they yeah. were sort of her surrogate parents for a while, and still kind of are, and still kind of are, <laughs> honestly, yeah. But you hear people talk about characters more and more, that sort of thing, and someone taking on a dad role or something. Because like, like, even like The Office, which is just yeah. people working, it's still kind of like some dysfunctional family, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. with a crazy uncle being Michael Scott. Yep. <laughs> I was about to say something about Stranger Things, but then I re- re- remembered you haven't seen season two yet. I've seen part of it, actually. I've uh-huh. started two episodes. Okay, okay. But a- Have you seen Eleven yet? I've seen her. Hanging out with hanging out uh, with yeah yeah her her, her new her new dad dad which yeah. is pretty awesome. No, everyone, and that's the thing. I think the thing with stories is, in some ways, they reflect two things, depending on what they're doing. They reflect both our desire for family because you you hang out with especially with TV shows because you see them every week. So eventually, yeah, they're just close enough. They're like family. Yeah, and that, I mean that's sort of the the conceit of a lot of these shows, especially ones a lot of them that take place in the workplace. Yeah, um, like I've seen this on NCIS all the time. Like they're together all the time, so of course they would treat each other like family because we as an audience want them to you know feel like we a family. want people. We want people to be that close to each other. We it's wish fulfillment. Like yeah. look, isn't it great they. You know, we get mad. Even the new Spider Man, basically, Tony Stark's like his dad, like yeah. Spider Spider Man's dad. Yeah, that's true. And this is something we want to see. And then you also have shows that want to reflect the current family structure, which is a little more chaotic, mm-hmm. a little more broken. Well, and, and not th- always in a bad way, but they're just saying this is how life is. Yeah, yeah. And it's a different focus too. If if it's a TV show, that's an ongoing story. That's this is kind of a day-to-day sort of thing. You're looking at these people repeatedly. Um, I think it might be worth talking about just to shift gears yeah. here a little bit. What about like um, a movie or a book or a play that's not an ongoing story about a family? What sort of family dynamics can you get into and explore there? Mm-hmm. Like some family plays like All My Sons. Which I, was is, gonna, I was just thinking of um, Death of a Salesman, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, similar sort of thing. I'm, I mean, horribly depressing tragedies. Isn't it, are, the, are those both... Um, they're, they're both... Uh, Arthur Miller. Yeah, they're both Arthur Miller. I think we talked about him before. <laughs> but on one, but they are basically how, at least, again, I've only seen All My Sons once, and I don't think I've ever actually read Death of Salesman, which is probably a shame on my part, but it's largely examining how, like, one person's brokenness or they, they, affects everyone. Yeah, yeah. It, it gets into the... Uh, he writes a lot of great history into his characters, Arthur mm-hmm. Miller, and... It's a great way to do character study when you're surround your your character who's about with lots of people who know him really, really well. Yeah. Um, it helps bring out all that stuff a little easier than you would. You know, you're not going to go into your deep longings and and unfulfilled dreams with your coworkers. No, usually. I mean, there are exceptions. There, there's a movie called The Big Kahuna that does a lot of that, but. <laughs> Um, but no, the family drama is a great place to do some of that kind of stuff. I'm trying to think of another family drama off hand. Well, that's a whole that's a whole conceit of say like Downton Abbey. 
Okay. You know, it's basically just a family drama. It's basically a family dealing with, well, it's more than just a family. You got the servants and stuff. But the family, in many ways, is dealing with the changing times. With the changing time, with the aristocracy falling, you know, having to adjust. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's, you know, very interesting that way, you know, because you got the the old generation, then the generation that's trying to make it work. And then the the young girl, the girls who are like, that's just going off, and, and they're yeah. driving, going to you know become newspaper reporters and things that you know women never did before, and mm-hmm. it's, that's an interesting way of using family to examine just change in time. You know, there's a lot of that sort of. Apparently, I, w- I would like to play the game sometime. There, uh, dra- one of the Dragon Warrior game, Dragon Quest games. I think it's five. Apparently, you play through the your main character and you get married and you play through the generations like the like your kids become the main character and the kids after that really yeah wow that's a really way, different way of doing a game yeah i think that would be cool i've just read the synopsis i don't know how it plays out or anything but i mean that's really interesting because most video games are about building up your character to be just as awesome as ever and that that's actually a much more long term sort of view that sounds kind of cool actually i, I need to hunt it down sometime i think probably I don't know if it's Super Nintendo or Nintendo, but... Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, I'm trying to think of another good family idea. <laughs> then you got The Simpsons. Uh, <laughs> family as a, as a foil. <laughs> as a foil, yeah. It's funny, though, because, you know, they've been on for 500 years. But um, they're <laughs> still probably the most conservative... I mean, in some ways, very traditional. I mean, they still go to church every Sunday... Co- um, compared to some of the other cartoon, uh, like mm-hmm. quote unquote adults cartoons that have come out since then, yeah, yeah, they're they're probably the more balanced one, yeah. But that's really not near here nor there. But I do think like movies, you can you can examine a lot how certain things. A lot of times with family movies, you'll see how like some event ripples out, you know, or how someone deals with something. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just very interesting, you know. And a lot of times, if it's a feel good movie, they all support each other, yeah. Or if it's not a feel good movie, then it'll just be chaotic. You know, one thing I would like to see more of, though, now that I'm thinking about it, we've talked about how, it, how uh, surrounding a character with a family helps bring out a particular character, or how it brings together a feeling of togetherness. But it'd be it'd be really interesting to see more movies to where the Incredibles sort of wound up, where it is about the family, not just as, as individuals, but as a unit. As a unit. Doing, working together, doing stuff. We need to find, I would love, maybe I should write it, a fantasy novel or epic, where it's a family being the main... I think it would be fascinating. I mean, I guess sometimes sometimes you have, like I'm reading Sanderson's giant series he's starting, book three just came out, Stormlight Archive. There's a father, well, I guess, I guess there's a father and a son and a daughter... There's, I mean, there's a core family that's, that's kind of do, doing a lot of moving and shaking, actually, hmm. which is different than... Actually, there's two sons and a daughter and the father, and they're kind of your... Lot, maybe there's other main characters, but there's some of their main characters. So that's... You don't see that very often, honestly. Yeah. When I think about it, I think that is one reason why... Well, it's not exactly related, but it's one reason why I had Amira in Children of the Wells. Mm-hmm. I uh, I gave her a daughter, a baby, they kept her with her, because I'd... This might be partly inspired by The Incredibles again. I like the idea that just because a woman becomes a mother doesn't mean that she doesn't stop being. Yeah, she can't still be an action <laughs> star. You know, I, I don't. I can't believe I almost forgot to talk about it. Um, another movie that's family's the main thing. Have you seen Coco yet? I have not. Oh man, it was good. Was it good? No, I really enjoyed it. I, would I was. I was. Some- yeah, I, I was a little uh, uncertain about it at first because it was like the whole day of the dead thing. That looks weird. But I, I've been hearing good things. About no, it. it's it's one of those previews. I, I compare it in my mind to Ratatouille. In that I saw the previews, thought eh, whatever. Saw it, I'm like, man, I really like this movie. Cool. Um, but I mean, one of the main themes is family and remembering. And I mean, I don't know when the last time I saw a cartoon, for goodness sakes, where. He has a great grandma and a grandma and a mom and dad, and they're all run around. You know, they're all interacting, deal with each other, and as opposed to like grandparents being out of the picture mm-hmm. or you know, so sure it was. It was di- you know, it was unique that way. Cool. Um, and obviously, family's the, like the main theme of the movie itself mm-hmm. with the Day of the Dead and all that stuff. But anyways, go watch it. Cool. Well, it sounds like we've identified a lot of interesting ways that storytellers. Uh, have you used families? I think there's still room to do a lot more with them. Yeah, I think for uh, for us creative types, think of ways to use the group as opposed to the individual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, America is very individualistic, so we tend to, we like our Lone Rangers or Han Solos or... Yeah. 
Um, or couples, you know, you get or couple, we yeah. like our romance, you know, that's mm-hmm. all good. But yeah, the family unit unit, I mean, it's obviously something that we tend to want to pair to people together or group people together this way. So why not? Rather than just being a conglomeration of strangers, which is a fine, you know, that's that's totally a fine way of doing it. But it'd be cool to see people kind of express the ideal version of like an actual together family going out and doing something cool. Yeah, I concur. All right. So that with the end of that, we'll go to our first soundtrack. My soundtrack today, I really want to find something crisp, you know, kind of wintry, but also that remind me of family. And Terraria is a game that my son, my son has really grown to love, and I play with him sometimes, which has been fun. And then I remember it was one of the few games like Zach would play, and we all went. <laughs> did Summer ever play with us? Summer? Uh, I think she did once, didn't she? Possibly. I thought. Oh yeah, because Tyler loved the game, right? I don't. No, think not Tyler. Tyler. Who no. was it? Austin, Austin loved it. Austin yeah. loved it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but Terraria is a better version of minecraft <laughs> yes man okay. field can be i mean he's he has like 400 lot he has he can't get any more life and he's all these awesome weapons i mean he's crazy wow. <laughs> yeah i um, mean it's it's too the reason i say i like it better than minecraft is it's 2d and i think it just has a better i don't know aesthetically it's more pleasing to me than minecraft yeah. is but that's just me but anyways the overclock remix doesn't have any terraria um remixes but i did find this cover of the ice biome um, the snow biome from Terraria, done by Eris Falling. Um, it's a very nice, kind of peaceful song, and so I hope you enjoy.
Well, um, that was enjoyable, wasn't it? Fun stuff. So, um, um, but something weird happened though while that soundtrack. Was we were playing. just chilling, and like the 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 house emptied out, and somehow I don't know how they got out. There were all kinds of traps that sounded like they were going off outside, but somehow your family showed up. Yeah, which is nice. So uh, say hi, gang. Hi. hi. Oh, stepping on those ornaments hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is the Hayden House family, um, not the Hayden household, we're at the McAllister household, yes. um, and this is the Weekly Hijack crew, which will be coming back relatively soon, but we'll talk about that at the end of the episode. All right, Tim, so this next section is very special, and was your idea. This is our Derailed Trains of Thoughts Christmas Special Contest. Insert some sort of jingle here. <laughs> so this is actually stolen. <laughs> this is actually stolen f- or borrowed, I guess, inspired by another podcast. Yeah, borrowed sounds much better than stolen. Yeah, borrowed. Yes. We'll, we'll go with that. Um, if you search for our podcast on iTunes, thankfully you will find it. But uh, as, along with the suggested podcast is one called uh, the Protagonist Podcast. And so I, I, I thought, well, the iTunes at least thinks this is close to ours. So I'll listen to it. And, and it's fun. But they mostly, each episode, focus on like one story as opposed to a theme. A like, th- what, thematic what idea. Do. Yeah. But they will sometimes do these special episodes where they'll do elevator pitches. If you're not familiar with the term, an elevator pitch is Hollywood speak for, you know, in case you get into an elevator with a uh, top Hollywood mogul. Uh, and you've Which got- might be dangerous nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, you have got like 30 seconds, a minute or something to pitch a story for this uh, blockbuster that you know that they're going to want to they're going to want to pick love. up. They're going to love. Yeah. Um, so in this case, and this is what they've done before, they take Christmas titles for actual Christmas specials. Yes. Ones we have not seen or ever heard of. And Nick and I have each written our own elevator pitch, if you will, or book synopsis or. Unknown to each other. Unknown to each other. And then the Hayden family here is going to evaluate, pick out which are the best. So we're all stuck in a large elevator, Christmassy elevator, apparently. Um, yes, I guess so. Um, boy, you 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 did sound get like you got hoarse during that soundtrack. Yeah, I don't somehow. know. Yeah, something happened. I was just, it was a very wintry soundtrack and I can't end up with a cold. So. <laughs> I feel like uh, the soundtrack took us through a time uh, yeah, that vortex was or something. So anyway, uh, Natasha helped us pick these out, um, and so wh- what's the first one on our list here, Nick? I have early, early, early Christmas special. Okay, early, early, early Christmas special. Do yes. you want to go ahead and go first? Okay, I'll attempt this. Okay, here we go. <laughs> In this outlandish comedy, the ghost of Christmas present, bored while waiting for Christmas Day, messes with the ghost of Christmas past time travel device. Accidentally teleported to prehistoric times, he's now stuck in the land before Christmas with only weeks to live. So while dealing with dinosaurs and tar pits, the Ghost of Christmas present must convince the tribe of belligerent Neanderthals to throw the biggest Christmas celebration this side of 0 AD in the hopes of all alerting the Chris- Ghost of Christmas past to his predicament and hopefully saving the joy and cheer of the holidays not only for this year, but for every year hereafter. Okay. <laughs> so I-, I was wondering if we would wind up going along similar lines. Um, we did not, <laughs> at least, at least so far. Um, I tried to keep these short, but I probably actually went a little longer than my allotted elevator pitch time, but we'll, we'll see how we this won't goes. judge you much for that. Okay. <laughs> In this dark comedy about the holiday entertainment industry, acclaimed filmmaker Art Woodhouse has been recruited by a major television network to create a new Christmas special to be premiered a week before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Marketers and advertisers have been pressuring the network to start the Christmas shopping season earlier than ever, and they want a new Christmas franchise to sell licensed toys, mugs, cell phone covers, and underwear. (laughs) Despite the inherent commercialism, Art is dedicated to making his Christmas special as genuine and heartwarming as possible until he hears that rival filmmaker Bill De Niro has been hired by a rival network to do a Christmas special two weeks before Thanksgiving. (laughs) Determined to be the first to capture the public's imagination and wallets with an early Christmas special, Art and his network push up their release date only for their competitors do the same. An all-out media war ensues with both parties racing to meet increasingly shorter deadlines. In the frantic rush, corners are cut, actors quit mid-production, and there is almost no time to finish the special effects and claymation. <laughs> Art starts to worry. By the time the specials premiere on the 4th of July weekend, will the spirit of Christmas be lost? That was genius. <laughs> the claymation was a nice touch, too, I think. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, the ghost of Christmas... Past? Present. Goes to Christmas present. 
going yes. to the past. Going to the past and having to teach uh, Neanderthals about Christmas in order to alert his brother, goes Christmas past, that so, he's there. The thing I like about yours is apparently it means that he's convincing them to celebrate Christmas before Christmas actually happens. Yes, exactly. Because goes to Christmas present will realize, or past will realize it if there's enough Christmassy cheer there. Well, there's never been that much Christmassy cheer before, you know, in a million BC before. Okay. So, yeah. There's a lot of, there, in my mind, there was a lot of a science, like how things work in this world, <laughs> which I did could push into the yeah, It almost sounds like it could just be the, a retelling of a Flintstones Christmas special. <laughs> 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 okay. But anyway, uh, any other questions from the peanut gallery? So my question is, Tim, whether yours is... The title of the the movie, the Christmas special, is describing the situation in which this Christmas special was made, or is the Christmas special about them making a Christmas special? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it's both. <laughs> Very meta. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah. My question... Okay, Nick. Yes. So in your version yes. of this Christmas special, the ghost of Christmas present goes into the past? Yes. Doesn't that just make him... Well, he uses the ghost of Christmas past time travel device. Because okay. ghost of Christmas past also okay. always goes in the past. The present only lives each year until Christmas, and then he dies because that's what happens. Oh. I worry that Nick has spent far too much time <laughs> thinking about the science of this one. No, I I am... I am a little concerned about Tim's because I don't know many buildings that tall with that. Elevator. That, was a, that was a longer elevator pitch. So I feel like the guy was kind of like halfway out the elevator. And he's like, okay, um, I got to go. This crazy guy's here. Uh, I'll tell you what, Tim, your sounds to me a lot like Real Land Murders. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that. That, that, that manic. <laughs> the manic sort of style. That's what worries me. <laughs> I'm not sure I can vote for it just because the title doesn't describe the movie. <laughs> it describes the situation in which the movie is made. But, it's but the if way. the movie is made that way, well, wait, here's the thing. Maybe it it's a documentary. I was going to say it's a, it's a mockumentary, I think. Oh, yeah. see, that I could yeah. see. Okay, okay, maybe. You know, so the special itself is early. I don't know. You, you don't have to, you don't have to necessarily air the special. The Fourth of July weekend. I think that would be fabulous, though. <laughs> yeah, you could. Um, just the the special inside the special, at least that's what happens. So, but anyway, I think so. We, like Thumbelina oh, inside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Anywho, no, it, it's it's definitely a, a behind the scenes sort of mockumentary sort of yeah. style dark comedy. Um, but anyway, so what do you guys think? Who right, votes, I got five of you guys. So. Who, who votes for... Uh, Wait, we should probably say who's actually here. Oh, I suppose we should. Yeah, we just assume people know who your family is. But So you heard uh, Zach, of course, Nick's brother, and Brianna. They were the ones uh, pestering us with questions. I mean, giving us some, some questions. Uh, Natasha, Nick's wife, is here too. Um, and our Nick's parents, yep. Kurt and Deb. So there they are Martin back there. Harry are here too, aren't they? No, uh, they're in the kitchen arguing like they normally do. I don't know Marvin Harry. They're, they must be new. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, show of hands, uh, who votes for Nick's early, early, early Christmas special? Uh, okay, three. This Nick. Okay. <laughs> See, to my advantage because they, they think like yeah, me. Yeah, you've got a home versa. court. <laughs> you've got a home court here. Okay, what about what about mine? See, I'd vote for Tim. Okay, <laughs> well, it looks like it's four. <laughs> he would. All right, so that one looks like Nick. That one's like four to one in Nick's favor. So congratulations, Ooh. Nick. So caveman and Christmas. <laughs> okay. All right. I guess I will. And weird science fiction. <laughs> I'll start up our next one here. Our next one is called Twelve Men of Christmas. Ex Navy SEAL Biggs McGraw has tried to stay away from kids since he lost his daughter five years ago due to cancer. But this Christmas, he can no longer ignore the gang violence in his inner city neighborhood when a truck transporting toys for the local children's hospital gets hijacked. Furious, Biggs recruits his biker gang of 11 other fellow ex-seals and marines to track down the hijackers, recover the stolen toys, and begin reclaiming their city. That is, that's nice. 
Okay. All right, here we go. Twelve men of Christmas. In this surreal legal drama, twelve men deliberate on the fate of the man accused of killing Santa Claus. As the arguments for the accused's innocence and guilt play out, it becomes clear that everyone has a motive for seeing the man released, except one. Whether from personal vendetta, philosophical belief, or vested business interests, the innocence of the Santa killer would be a clean end to Christmas, if only they convinced the one holdout. And as tempers rise and secrets are revealed, the jurors begin to wonder, is it possible that Santa isn't dead and that he's one of them? And then I also have a tagline here, just so these 12 men would decide, is he naughty or nice? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, I did tailor mine here a little bit because uh, I had another paragraph that was like, you know, I think this sums it up pretty well in the first one. So no, I, since I, since our audience seemed to appreciate the shorter, thing, <laughs> I felt like that first brevity, t- is, the- brevity is a soul of wit. Yes. Yeah, I decided to go with that for uh, this round. All right. So any questions from the judges, questions or comments? I never want not to comment. Um, <laughs> I really think I would love a good hot cocoa. I'd watch a little um, Die Hard and then pop in the the 12 Men of Christmas. I mean, that seems like a perfect night. Yeah, Tim's Tim's version of uh, the 12 Men of Christmas. Sounds like a perfect, like... Die Hard uh, Christmas collection. Chaser. <laughs> My idea was, at first I was trying to think, what do you do with 12 guys with the Ocean's Eleven? And then, I, then I was like, wait, no. What if this is the Expendables Christmas special? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like nice. It. So that's yeah, I went 12 Angry Men. Yeah, I, I, that crossed my mind. <laughs> All right. Any other else? questions? If not, let's go ahead and vote on this one. All right, who votes for Nick's uh, jury trial? And uh, 12 Men of Christmas says Expendables. All right. Yeah, yeah go, Tim. Woohoo. All right. So we are we are tied. Now, this is the one I really don't know. <laughs> is any... This is the one I I, I I procrastinated on for a while. I, I kept changing this one tonight. Like, I just kept editing it. <laughs> okay. It's not even that good. But <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll see what we got here. Okay, so I just start this one, right? You can start this okay, one. Okay, so this is Holiday in Handcuffs. I really feel like this is like a lifetime. Um <laughs> you heard this one? Okay, so Noel Tannenbaum has a good life. A sweet job as a photographer, a fashion blog, an adorable dachshund named Twinkles, and a hot boyfriend actor. Better yet, it's nearly Christmas, the most perfect and beautiful time of the year. But on Christmas Eve, she catches the boyfriend making out with his agent. In tears and rage, she hits the road. In the sudden snow, she crashes into a police car. While trying to explain what happened, she sees millions of dollars stashed in the back of the cop car. The officer handcuffs her and stuffs her in the back of the car. Now on the run against her will with a nervous and inept con man, Noelle's life becomes one of near escapes, breathless encounters, and a strange sympathy for the ugly and strange. It may be the best Christmas ever if she can survive it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, and like like Nick, I uh, I threw out a couple ideas with this title before I uh, landed on this. The Erickson family Christmas shopping trip is not going well this year. Parents Mike and Kathy are worried about managing their shopping budget. Teenage daughter Kimberly has been on edge since they arrived at the mall because where one of the security guards has mistaken her in the past for a shoplifter. Twin boys Logan and Luke have been restless all day and try to continue their cops and robbers game while shopping. But when they handcuff themselves together and lose the key, their parents are too distracted by the realization that Kathy has a winning lottery ticket in her purse, which she has accidentally swapped with another shopper. (laughs) The family frantically splits up the search for the purse, but as the dad, Mike, hurries his handcuffed sons through the store, someone suspects a child abduction is in progress and informs (laughs) the police. And unbeknownst to wife Kathy, the purse she accidentally swapped contains government secrets (laughs) stolen by Russian spies that had intended to make a handoff of them all. Before the day is through, the Erickson family will have mall security, local police, Russian spies, and the FBI on their tails as they try to reclaim their million-dollar lottery ticket and avoid spending the holiday in handcuffs. <laughs> nice. I can completely see that one on TV. I was all for Nick's until the Russian spy <laughs> state secret in the other purse. Because I was like, I, I don't know. I, but now the Russian secrets, <laughs> that's tough. I think I could see my own mother doing this exact same thing. Like, ah, I grabbed the wrong purse. This one's got this government secrets. Looks like I'm going to jail. I can see it. And Nick, I don't see much comedy in yours. It's not meant to be a comedy. It's meant to be a comedy. It, it is. I couldn't quite write it. I couldn't quite write it right. I meant for the whole, like, uh, the, the con man to be very, like, 
humorous and is the con man the the police officer police officer with yeah. all the money in the trunk yeah. okay yeah i couldn't again it's one i kept trying to rewrite and encapsulate the idea it's supposed to be more fun loving than it came off as okay when you started off nick and you said that uh, what's her face had the perfect life and everything i had hoped that she was going to spend the ho- holidays in handcuffs because she brutally murdered the boyfriend's <laughs> agent. And I would have been all for that. And then she like goes on this giant killing spree. And, oh, and, okay. Like, so at first I was like, yeah, there's going to be blood. Like the honeymoon at sea thing we watched that one time. <laughs> there was this weird, yeah, with Summer Glau in it. Anyways. <laughs> so I, I think the, the lesson here is that we, we, we found success with our audience going for like, Violence and Vi- violence dancers. works. <laughs> I mean, granted, mine I think is supposed to be a little bit more madcap, yeah. than, than Twelve Men of Christmas was. But anyway, um, all right, let's vote. Anyone here, else guys. here? Okay, holiday madcaps. Who votes for Nick's? <laughs> and for mine, okay. <laughs> and who goes with mine here? Okay, looks like that one is three to two. Three to two. So, Tim wins. Woo-hoo! So, well, thanks, guys. That Eliminate them. That was a lot of fun. Now, since we have a little bit of extra time here, I thought it might be fun to go through some of the the. We could do some live oh, brainstorming. Oh, oh, maybe okay. go through some of the ones that we didn't. Uh, okay, let's do this thing. So, and maybe maybe you guys can uh, come up with some interesting ones. Live brainstorming. Uh, how about the bear who slept through Christmas? I was a little tempted to go through this one, but I felt like it might be too easy. It sounds like kind of a Yogi Bear sort of thing, like. Yeah, but I mean, is it like a... No, I got it. The Chicago Bears have a huge game coming up. And one of their uh, players, their their star quarterback, the night before is like, he just, probably uh, his wife, who they got a divorce, uh, his kid was going to come over for a Christmas thing, and he ruined it, and he was late, and she come over, and she takes him. And so the guy is just like having a horrible time. And then it's, it basically turns into a, uh, a remake of A Christmas Carol as he falls asleep after having drank too much. <laughs> and then... Um, this actually sounds like a mix between A Christmas Carol and Bad Santa. From the I've never seen it. Bad Santa, but maybe. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, somehow uh, realizes the error of his ways, of course, and uh, then goes on to win the uh, big game the next day, even though he thinks he missed it, but he goes back and, you know, that kind of thing. Because, That's what I'm going with. Because it's still Christmas morning. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Because he... And it's guaranteed to be a winner because it's a classic, it's a remake. And that's all <laughs> Hollywood does these days is remake old things. There you go. There you go. All right. That's good and nice and all, but. <laughs> oh. So, 24 hours of sleeping bear cubs. <laughs> that's it. Just, just a video of sleeping bear cubs <laughs> for yeah, 24 you know, hours. People watch live streams of animals on. Just doing nothing. That's not really That's a Christmas true. special, yeah. though. It's a Christmas well, on Christmas. On it's a stream. Planet, it, probably <laughs> <is>. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> okay. Animal Planet. Going with the remake. All right, uh, listeners, you vote in the comments on Facebook or here on the that website. Was part of the deal. <laughs> part of the deal. <laughs> remake, remake, remake. All right. What else do we have in the we list? Have, next one was like Father, like Santa. This feels like a, this is a ripoff of the Santa Claus, is is my guess. So Santa's been doing this for a long time. Um, except, wait a minute, like father, like Santa. So maybe this is Santa's father? Is that what it's about? Oh, that'd be interesting. Oh, he's, yeah, he's got it. Like oh, some horror. It's like it's like um, bad childhood, and he's trying to deal with it. I think it, no, it should be like Santa's. It's basically Last Crusade, except he's trying to do it when his dad's in the sleigh with him. <laughs> his, his dad's like actually like a hundred years old, and Santa's only like in his seventies or something. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> like just a real grouchy. Like you're not doing this right. And back in my day, we, no, I think they, be- they called me Father Christmas. <laughs> I didn't have all this overhyped commercialism. <laughs> I think I think it'd be great. You yeah. you got in that deal with Coca Cola back in the nineteen thirties as it completely ruined the holiday. See, no, I think I think uh What if you did something like in the What's the Bill Murray when he's mentally he goes to the the oh like, what about Bob all the time what about Bob what if you did like a a mental comedy kind of thing with like Santa in all the you know the off months like always going to therapy about talking about his dad and stuff <laughs> I really think you could do something with that uh, what about Bob kind of idea there. <laughs> 
I think I think that would be some combination of all that would be great. I think yeah, Ken Santa's father in there because people love this whole like. So it's basically it's a Santa family drama. Yeah, is, is what it is. Yeah, so. The Claus, Claus family drama. I yeah. Like okay. I could see that. I could see you know, either a special or it's like a soap opera. You know, yeah, it could yeah, be an ongoing know. thing. Man, <laughs> man, we're, we're just ch- churning out. Just like a Netflix original here. that comes, like like a, yeah. a, a episode thing that comes out right around Christmas. Yeah. There you yeah. go. There you go. They'll, they'll get all the awards. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you want another one here? Yeah. Let's get let's get another one here. Um, we've got Stealing Christmas. Um, I don't know what. Oh, yeah. I know what. What is that? Like, Grinch? It's the live action Grinch. Oh, they did that, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> it needs to be a claymation. It needs to be like one of the classic Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer ones or or whatever. Maybe it's a, a second one with um, Jack Frost in it and uh, the miser. What's the. No, no, no. Here's no. Or you could go kind of new school and do like a. like It's like a, like a Despicable Me. Holiday special, and he goes and steals like Whoa. the North Pole. Oh, so, like steals like the actual uh, like North Pole, like all the factory the pole, work the whole, and stuff. Yeah, all of Santa's workshop and all yeah. that stuff. So you okay? Yeah. So make it all big and like heisty, heisty, sort of, yeah, sort of thing. And, yeah, and cartoony, and uh, maybe in the in the old school Rudolph I, style. I can see DreamWorks doing something like this. Yeah. Um, if you know, if not claymation, it, it could easily be a CG animated sort of thing. A CG claymation. Yeah, I think yeah. they'll probably do that nowadays. CG claymation. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of what Flushed Away was. Um, oh, okay, yeah. All right, one last one. Okay, next. um, Bookie and the Secret Santa. Bookie and the Secret Santa. That's what Bookie and the Secret Santa. Okay, so th- <laughs> this this is about horse racing. <laughs> in in the mob, I'm okay. Thinking. In mob, okay. Um, they're like horse racing and betting, and um, all the mobsters. They they've got this. They have the secret Santa thing. Um, and it'd be and, great with your transfer. Like you have a network of Santas that can like transfer <laughs> contraband and stuff. Oh, okay. No one would ever expect you got packages in your bag all the time, giving it to little kids. Okay. But- <laughs> no, uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It would go back to him. I just my, my, there, yeah. my my thought is that you've got all these like guys who are like obsessed with horse racing and stuff. So they're all trying to figure out what is the best present to get their mob boss, and uh, and someone manages to find the like something that resonates with his childhood. And the mob boss is both like really touched and and really disturbed. Like, all right, which one of you mugs knew about this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, it'd be great to have like, just mob secret Santa. Would be great, like they all exchange gifts and stuff. I think that'd just be. I'm not sure why cool. I associate horse racing with the mob. That was just the first. Well, bookie, that came to mind. Well, bookie just made me think like bookie, yeah, gambling it, underneath the table. Yeah, and stuff. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think that's working. So. Oh, Rudolph, dad had a. Dad had a great idea. Rudolph should be in the one of the horses' name is Rudolph. There you go. Or like uh, Donner, maybe it is actually see. Rudolph in the at the end. They're like his nose glows, <laughs> and the mobs all like what? Yeah, <laughs> I like it, Dad. Nice. <laughs> oh my. Oh, anyway, so those are our, some of our uh, <laughs> Christmas impromptu special. Christmas specials. I'd watch almost any of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, there's uh, people pigeonhole Christmas specials too much. We, mm-hmm. We're giving some gold ideas here for what you could do with these. But anyway, so that's our Christmas special. Um, you can be looking forward to hearing uh, more of these guys, uh, especially Brianna. Brianna has been our guinea pig for our Babylon 5 uh, watch through on the Weekly Hijack. Which, which is been coming up. Coming up soon. We're going to start releasing that come January because uh, we've got a lot built up here. Um, actually, this would be a good opportunity. Uh, as a Babylon 5 newbie, Brianna, how, what's, been, what's your experience been like so far? Um, there are a lot of names that are very similar and <laughs> I still get a lot of them mixed up so I just use facial features to describe characters still or voices uh, or voices <laughs> or weird comparisons of things that probably don't make sense and I'm getting there <laughs> it's a step by step process <laughs> but it can work for you too now now you um, obviously you you are a bit younger than us um. <laughs> everybody has that up. <laughs> Always gotta bring that up. So, uh, but I'm just saying that you you've been enjoying the show, even though it's the special effects are a little dated. Would you say? And um, would you encourage people who might enjoy old Star Trek to watch? Well, um, yes, I believe this came out when I was still in diapers, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I have always enjoyed old 
older TV shows. I mean, like original Star Trek, the original Batman series, uh, just any, anything like that. I think you would enjoy Babylon 5. Cool. And uh, the reason we say that, because we know a lot of people haven't. One of the reasons we waited so long to do Babylon 5 or Weekly Hijack is we didn't know if it was available for people who hadn't seen it before. Yeah, because it's hard to find. It is hard to find. But it is available on Play 90, I believe. Something. It's not Play 90, is it? It's something 90. I-90? No. Go 90? It might be Go 90. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. There, There is an actual legitimate streaming service run by Verizon that uh, has it available. There's a lot of 90 shows. Yeah, and so the ideal uh, the idea with this version of the Weekly Hijack is we do a regular uh, version with just Brianna, so it's very newbie friendly. But then we will uh, have a section at the end of the episode for those of you have seen it before, so we get to talk about spoilers yeah. and uh, talk about all the cool foreshadowing that uh, the show's doing. Yeah, awesome. So, so be on the lookout for it. In the meantime, where else can they get our uh, our regular podcast? Nick? Everywhere. Um, also iTunes and Stitcher and. Um, Santa. So. <laughs> Ask for it for Christmas, and he will be happy to give you, <laughs> and, and, and he'll be happy to give you a uh, link to the real Trains of Thought. <laughs> Available at derailedtrainsofthought.blogspot.com. All right, so for my soundtrack, I picked a song that's simply titled Home, which seems very appropriate for this family-themed Christmas episode of Derailed Trains of Thoughts. It's remixed from the game Terra Enigma. And it is was made by Ro Taka. So it is very homey and mellow and folksy, and I hope you enjoy it. And we hope, of course, um, on behalf of the, the Haydens and everyone involved with the old trains of thoughts, we hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. And Happy New Year. And happy Hanukkah, anything, any yeah. of those. Advice. Happy, happy happiness. <laughs> Season's greetings. <laughs> Until next time, this is Tim. This is Nick. Bye.